Good afternoon, welcome to Pike Creek Farm. Today I'm canning something new. I love butternut squash soup and I make it in my crock pot and I add apple and onion and carrot and sweet potato, sometimes celery, I vary it up. But I saw a recipe that meets all the safety standards for butternut squash soup base basically in jars. I'm going to do it in pint jars because my husband doesn't care for it. And it has to be done in chunks. I have to peel this, take the seeds out, and cut it into pieces and all the other vegetables. And then add the broth and seasonings. When I want to use it, you heat it up and puree it. And I add coconut milk. You can add regular milk. You can add half and half. Um, sometimes I put a little bit of Greek yogurt on top or sour cream. It's always really tasty. So I'm gonna chop up all the vegetables and I will fast forward you through that because it gets sort of monotonous. Let's cut up the vegetables, carrots, onion, apple, sweet potato. There's the apple. The chopper is great. Put some lemon juice on the apples. Got my canner ready. Now last is the butternut squash. Peel it and take the seeds out and chunk it up. Okay, turn down my microphone. Hopefully that will help you hear better. The recipe, which I will put down below, said one large butternut squash or two small. It had two sweet potatoes, but I had a very large one. It had five medium carrots, two onions, and two apples. I'm going to add one teaspoon of salt because there was salt in that broth, and I can always add more salt. Two teaspoons of garlic. I love the smoky flavor that comes from the cumin. I'm going to add one teaspoon of that. And after I heat this up, I'll give it a taste and see if I think it needs some more. I am going to do one teaspoon of ground ginger. and about a half a teaspoon of the crushed red pepper. You could use cayenne too. This is just what I grabbed. I'm gonna add some black pepper, maybe quarter teaspoon because that I can also add when I go to eat it. So I'm going to bring this to a boil on the stove and then give it a taste test and I'll bring you back. I have all my jars washed and they were hot. They're cooling off some now. The broth is ready. Everything, all the veggies are chopped. So I'm going to start filling the jars and you do it in layers and you want the thickest layer to be the butternut squash. So let's start filling. Here's some sweet potato, some carrot, and we fill up to the one inch mark, a little bit of apple. Onion. So that looks about there. Okay, 
So I'm going to keep filling these. Let's grab another one. So the thickest layer will be the butternut squash. So I got that. Sweet potatoes. Carrots. little bit more squash to that one settled down carrots apple and onion poke it around and I will poke again when I add the broth because it might shift and when you get rid of some air pockets I tasted the broth. It has very good flavor. It is a little spicy. Not excessively, but if you're someone who doesn't like heat, just leave out any red pepper or cayenne. It isn't necessary for it. You can just use plain chicken broth. You can just add garlic with to the chicken broth. So, I don't think you can see. There's too many jars. We're going to fill this to the one inch mark and then debubble. We're going to process these for 65 minutes for pints. If we were doing quarts, it would be 90 minutes. You process for the longest time that any one of the vegetables has, and it's the sweet potatoes. bubble with all these chunks in here it's real important to debubble then adjust the contents as needed to get them to the one inch and this is a little high so let's take back some of the liquid it made everything float up Wipe this rim so it's nice and clean. No food particles, no spices. Finger tight on the rim, on the ring, and into the canner. I have 10 jars, so I will be double layering. There is a little bit of heat, like I said, so leave out that if you don't like any spice. But I find that the coconut milk, when you heat it up, really tempers that. Plus, I usually serve it with a dollop of Greek yogurt. It's really good with a little bit of cowboy candy on top wipe the rim. One of the good things about wiping the rim too is it gives you another opportunity to check and make sure there's no nicks. Anything wrong with that rim. So once I get these all in there I am going to turn up the heat on the canner and then Wait until it steam starts blowing out the vent, very strong steam, like a freight train, and set the timer for 10 minutes. And after the 10 minutes is up, I will put my weighted gauge on. And I will take you through all that process. My husband does not like this soup. When I make it, I eat it, my daughter eats it. He doesn't understand or appreciate a pureed soup and no meat. 
He likes the things a little more hearty. I don't know if I did it with a sandwich, if he might like it better then, maybe. Hey, I'm gonna keep filling. I have five more jars. I'm gonna keep filling them and I'll bring you back when I have them done. I have seven pints on the bottom layer. I have three left to go. So I'm gonna put my um, shelf in. This is like the same thing as what's on the bottom. I bought an extra one when I got my 23 quart Presto because I can double stack in it. So I'm gonna take advantage of it. Three more to pack. I did have to heat up some more broth. So I would recommend three quarts of broth. Okay, here's the top three. And these do have to be pressure canned. This cannot be water bath canned and be shelf stable according to the USDA guidelines. So I'm gonna lock my lid on. I have a Presto 23 quart. You follow what works for your altitude and for your pressure canner. You can see the steam coming out. The lock popped up. And I have my timer set on 10 minutes. Timer is going off. So we now put the weight. So now we just wait for the pressure to build up and for the weight to start swinging dancing like a hula dancer, not too crazy. And then we set the timer. I just set my timer and lowered my heat a little. You learn where the sweet spot is on your stove to keep this going like this. You don't want it to stop, you don't want it to drop too low, but you don't want it to go crazy. So I am excited to have this available this winter for taking to work. I will puree it before I go or mash it up there and heat it up. I will add some coconut milk or some Greek yogurt to it and top it with some top it with some bacon or um, pepitas are good. Let me know in the comment below what you would put on top of this soup when you served it. If you like this video and want to see more canning videos, like push the like button and then subscribe to my channel. I do videos on canning, on cooking, on baking, and vintage recipes, and I'd love to have you here. I hope to see you next time at Pike Creek Farm.